have a look at the exercise. Uh, so one out of six weekly exercises. I saw that some of you have already accepted the exercise and started to work on it. So um, I'll show that in a bit. Uh, on this exercise landing page, there's other useful information. I added this link to the GitHub um, and Git instructions. And then there's a bunch of hints related to this week's lesson. So I think especially this week, the hints page might be quite useful uh, when you are working with the exercise. And also this week's exercise really concretely builds upon things we learned in GeoPython course. So if you haven't taken the GeoPython course, and even if you did, you might need to go back to the GeoPython materials about functions, iterations, uh, pandas data frames, and then uh, using assertions. So we will be now recycling some of the stuff and then combining, adding on these geometric objects. So I would say that the exercise this week is way more complicated than the lesson. And that's the point, because as I mentioned, you learn best when you actually work on the problems and apply. Uh, and here today we introduced a new topic, which is the geometric objects. And now you take everything you learned uh, and add in uh, the geometric objects in there. So this lesson is exercise is even more about functions, functions and pandas data frames than actually geometric objects, which is actually quite nice. Uh, all right, so how to get started? You can accept the assignment. I think I have already done that. Okay, maybe I'll do so. Well, usually use another browser, so you can then sign in. Mm, so we are managing the exercises through this GitHub classroom. And the point is that each week you launch your own uh, exercise repository through the GitHub classroom link like this. Uh, once it's created, you can find it in the AutoGIS 2020 organization. And all the repositories are private, only the course instructors. So me, Emil and Sonia have access to all of yours uh, repositories. But for other, other people, they are private and we hope that you keep them private uh, so that then the exercise solutions don't start living their own life. All right. Uh, there's a readme file and then there's two Jupyter notebooks with the problems. Technical things, the deadline, we have now discussed that the deadline would be always uh, next week's Thursday. So now it's a Tuesday, you'll have practical session on Friday. And then after the practical session, you have one week to submit the exercise. And I hope that's enough of time. Uh, for you and it's of course best if you can start working already before the exercise session on Friday so you get the most out of the exercise session if you need help or if you're working with your uh, partner. Ding, ding, ding. Um, yeah what else then there's some technical information about these uh, test cells I'll show you in a bit so now that we still have some time I'll first uh, talk describe the aim of this exercise and then I could still finally show uh, in practice hands-on how you actually start working with the exercise in Jupyter Notebook. So if that's like super clear to you, you don't have to stick until the very end, but I, I would be happy to introduce that to the new students and also to get it recorded, uh, recorded then on the lesson video. But first uh, about the aim, so, well, the technical aim is to uh, refresh your memory about defining functions and combine uh, function definitions with uh, handling geometric objects. And then the second technical goal is to refresh your memory about reading in actual data files. And then again, combining the information from the data file with your skills with geometric objects. Uh, First two 
set of problems uh, are about the function definitions. Let's see if this works. So if you if you get this reload thing um, after you have uploaded your exercises, that's not a big deal. It just means that your solutions are not yet maybe in the. It's just not able to render the notebook. Maybe at this point I'll do then. If I think my Firefox was working. Mm -hmm. then I'll show it at Jupyter Lab. Just a second. Yeah. Okay. Well, never mind then. I'll first show the technical side and then I'll explain the aim of the problems. So I hope you're still with me. Uh, how we start working with the exercises, this should be familiar to all of the students who were here in the first teaching period. So you start your exercise by cloning it to the either to your own computer or to the Jupyter lab environment. So now um, in here, I suggest you start working under auto GIS exercises. It should be empty at this point. Uh, when you have navigated to the correct directory, you can use the Git plugin uh, to clone the repository. I have copied the clone link from here, this one, and I paste it in here, uh, clone. And now you can see, hopefully in a bit, uh, now where do we go? Let's see. Hmm. I just managed to. I did not practice this, so let's see what's wrong. Successfully cloned. If somebody knows where it went, then. We can maybe refresh my list. Oh, doesn't work. Well, then there must be some problem with the Git plugin uh, over at CSC Notebooks. I will fix that uh, as soon as possible, but this is a great excuse to improvise and show you how to clone on the command line. Uh, so don't worry if this is now confusing. There must be something with the uh, something wrong with the Git plugin, I assume. I'm sorry for not testing that before. Mm, so I will navigate to the correct folder. This is how I usually work. So for whichever folder you want to be in, I suggest it's the exercises folder. You can do Git, clone, and then uh, shift, paste, uh, clone. Then you will be asked some information. Actually, now it well, yeah, now it came because I just found it. Sorry. Um, then when you're typing in your uh, password, you don't see anything on the screen, but it is being recorded in there. So now, just by running git clone uh, in the correct folder in the terminal window. I'm able to clone uh, the repository. And I'll, in the first place, I will fix this uh, Git plugin. I don't know if there's some build, build step that hasn't worked correctly. Uh, so I can maybe post instructions about this online. Mm, anyway, but back to the exercise. Once you have been able to clone it, uh, you should see it in the file browser. There's the same readme file. Mm, and then there, there are these uh, exercise notebooks. In the first one, uh, the point will be to create custom made functions uh, for creating geometries. And if you don't remember how functions are defined, you can go back to lesson four of GeoPython. And in this problem, we start with a very simple function. And then we proceed to creating functions that can actually handle invalid input values. So for example, uh, if you want a positive value, your function can check that it's a positive value. Or if you want a list of 
shapely points, you can check that the input is actually a list of shapely points and these sorts of things. So that's problem one. Uh, then in problem two, ding, 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 we create more functions uh, than also with these checks, checks in place. So basically problems one and two are pretty much the same, uh, but then the functions get a bit more complicated as you proceed. And for those who are new, you will see these are quite full of text, but basically in these markdown cells, uh, you have the instructions and then you can always start by uh, removing these uh, two lines of code and then start uh, adding your own. So then you would have this def create point geom function definition and then you write your code and then you have return something. Okay. So that's how you get started. Uh, in the second set of problems, mm, in here, so this is actually, I think this is already quite a challenging task. So don't worry and please ask for help. So we will be working with some real world data. Uh, students in Helsinki might be familiar with the travel time matrix data set. So we have the data file here in the data folder uh, note that it's a semicolon delimited file and it has a bunch of columns, but we are eventually interested in the coordinate columns. So there's column from X and from Y and together they form the origin point. And then there's a column 2X and 2Y and together for each row, that is the coordinate pair or the destination. Uh, so this travel time matrix data set covers the uh, greater Helsinki region. Uh, you can read more info about information about it in here. Uh, but I wonder if I can have some nice, nice uh, visualization of the data very quickly on the screen. Let's see in here. No, sorry. Also didn't prepare to show that one. Actually, in here, there's maybe a better. Just to explain the point of the date set. Mm. Uh, just finding one of these maps. So yeah. Sorry, this took a bit of time, but the data set uh, looks like this if you visualize it, it on a map. And what is it con consists of is that it has 13,000 rows times 13,000 files. And what we have in this exercise is one of these 13,000 files, and each file represent, represents travel times across the region to that particular uh, grid cell. So there are 13,000 small grid cells, and then each cell contains the travel time information to that cell. That's basically what the data is about. And if you look at the data, you can see that uh, the two, here's the from ID and to ID. So the from ID is the same, and so are the from, from coordinates are the same. So this from ID is actually the kind of the decimal or the cell to which all the other data relates to. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then in this problem, your task is to read in the file, read in information from those coordinate columns, and then create points from those columns, and then create lines between those columns, to put it short. So this is actually, it's a bit of a challenging task. You need to know your uh, Panda skills, you need to know your shapely uh, skills and to be able to put those two together. And there are for sure things that we haven't covered dur during the lessons. So check the hints, uh, check the documentations, uh, ask for help if there's something something difficult. So the point here is to, for you to really dive, dive in uh, and learn, learn how to manipulate this data and turn the CSV file into actual uh, 
uh, geometries. Okay, so yeah, sorry about the Git plugin not working. Uh, I'm not too worried about it because it's an excellent chance for you to start using Git from the command line, but I understand that it's a handy tool. So let's get it fixed for everybody. Uh, other than that, um, I wonder if I had something else on my mind, maybe to wrap up. So there will be the exercise session on Friday uh, related to this week's topic. And then we will continue next Tuesday with GeoPandas. Uh, and I'm also happy to answer questions related to the exercise at the start of next week's lesson. So now it's 10 to 8, uh, 10 to, sorry, 10 to 6, not 8, luckily. So maybe time to wrap things up. But if you have, uh -huh, there are some questions at this point. So Git plugin doesn't work. The first technical problem we encounter, but let's overcome it. Uh, how fast can we expect the lecture recordings to be available? I have promised them by Friday. Uh, let's, of course, I try to do them as quickly as possible, but I also kind of won't be staying here today until midnight doing that. It depends a bit on the technicalities. So Dave was handling the lesson videos in the first exercise, uh, first teaching period. So now I need to see how long it takes to process. So I need to edit them a bit, but before Friday, I promise. Uh, so exercise, yes, good question. Thanks for asking. So exercise one should be done individually. Uh, yes, so everybody should submit their own exercises. Actually, the information should be available on this page. Uh, but you are more than welcome to work in pairs. I don't know, actually, if I put it in here. So I will be sending out a message, maybe on Slack or even uh, of an ALOMATE form asking you if you don't have a coding body but would like to like to have one so that can be arranged otherwise those who were working in pairs in the first teaching period and are happy with that feel free to continue I would just ask everybody to eventually then commit your own copy of the exercise so it's totally fine to work in pairs even so that the other one does the coding and the other one is the navigator. But at the end, uh, you could then just share the solution amongst you too. I trust everybody that if there are some free writers, I'm sure that I'll notice it at the end with the final exercise if you haven't actually been doing the work. So I trust that uh, you use the pair programming for learning purposes and not for maybe uh, skipping some work. So yes. Uh, feel free to work in pairs. And actually we plan to set up the Zoom so that when you join Zoom, there would be automatically a, a breakout room for the partners. So you can of course organize your own Zoom, Zoom sessions, but also in the Friday practical sessions, there would be a more efficient way to send you out uh, working in pairs if you want. But assessment will be, so everybody's responsible of submitting their own work. Uh, to put it free. Mm. So, okay, Emma has a question about changing, uh, saving changes in the exercise. Emma, I think we could maybe, I could stay with you for a, a little while and explain things uh, about working in Jupyter Lab. Maybe in short, if you do start working, you save the file in here, click. And then the point is that finally, now you have the exercise on the cloud computing environment and you should eventually get the files back to GitHub. And for that, we are using Git. Uh, so how to use Git uh, is another lesson of its own. So maybe for those who are joining us now, should uh, could first go through this Git lesson from GeoPython course before actually starting to work on the exercise. Okay, I hope that answers your question enough clearly. So the point would be to do your work. Uh, maybe I can now demonstrate it on the command line. Uh, sorry for going on and on. Uh, 
So eventually you should be able to, well, yeah, actually this Git plugin should work. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so now I have, first I cloned the exercise. I have made some changes. I have saved, saved my file. Uh, I can then add the changed file to the staging area. Then I will uh, commit my changes. Mm. Something like that. I'll commit my changes. Then I need to give some information. Mm. Okay, let's see if this works. Uh, once I have added and committed the changes, I push them to GitHub. So this is now a two second introduction to a two, two hour lesson on using Git. So I really recommend that you check the uh, lesson that everybody else has taken, but this is a good recap. So now that I have edited the file, saved the file, passed it through this Git process, I should see uh, my commit message, removed error, and I have changed this uh, problem one to two uh, thing. So this is the ultimate goal that you modify the files on the cloud computer, you uh, version control it using Git, and then you push, first you commit the changes on the computer, then you push the changes to GitHub where then me and the course assistants will find your work. Okay, you can use, uh, yeah, for sure, you can use command line. We have just been using the uh, Git plugin because we had 100 students in the first course. Uh, so on the Git uh, command line, you can definitely use that. And if you need some recap, uh, there are the most, uh, most essential commands listed in here. Maybe the useful thing to do is then to cache your credentials. I think it's somewhere in here. Cache your credentials. So there's this line of code if you're working on the command line. Uh, so then you don't need to put your credentials all the time in there. So I'm going majorly over time, but now that we're talking about it, I could show the same workflow on the computer. So I'll do some uh, more changes. I'll maybe add uh, to the uh, I'll do some changes in here. So now I have my template for my uh, function. And then I'm going back to the command line. I run git status not a git repository i need to go to exercise one then git status now i'm inside my repository i run git status and then git knows that uh, i have modified these files i need to do like this because zoom is preventing me from seeing everything uh, then i do git add so the same thing as in the plugin exercise problem one with status now i have these um, changes to be committed uh, exercise one problem one to two then i do git commit uh, added dot string template uh, that's in there mm, then now I have some un untracked changes, but I want to push this one commit. So now um, if I do, well, first I would want to do git pull. Let's yeah, sorry for going over time. You can watch the video later if you're already super bored, but I'll now uh, show this until the end. Uh, so indeed, at this point, you will want to uh, maybe cache your credentials, not to have to type in uh, your username all the time. Then git push, and I think now git will ask us to, well, 
I should have run the configuration command before. Okay, so there it went on the command line. I run git push and I refresh this page. So I have this uh, latest commit message added docstream template in there. Okay, so highly recommended use git from the command line saves a lot of trouble. Uh, excellent. Okay, so well, one minute before uh, six sharp, I think this is a good point to end. So good luck with the exercise indeed. Good to start early, it is uh, more challenging than the lesson itself. So yeah, thanks for those who stuck stuck around until the very end. And see, see you latest next week.